Yeah, hello everyone. Good afternoon once again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right then, All right, very then. well. Please, how many of us have done our assignments? How many of us have been able to sign up to the um, the O365, I mean, I've been able to sign up for the um, developers um, view, the accounts, because that was the last place we stopped. How many of us has been able to do that? With a raise of hand, please. Because I'm just going to start from there today. There's actually nothing for like an, um, there's not going to be anything like, um, uh, what they call it, like, um, how will I put it? A sort of um, presentation to do today. It's just more of we going practical from now on. Okay, so I'm just going to share my screen screen real quick. Um, please let me know if you can see the screen. The session is already recorded. So for some of us that not that were not here last week, some of the things we dealt with was just for us to go through. Um, last week we went through um, cloud computing, an introduction to cloud computing where we look at the difference between the deployment model, which had which actually is responsible for where you want um, your data or your services to be deployed to and then who has access to it and then we'll also look at um, the service um, model. Um, with a raise of hand on this call, please, how many of us were on that session last week? Hello, can anyone hear me? Hi. Yes, you can. Oh, yes, I can. Yes. Well, you, well, how many of you were in the session last week? Like we said, this session needs to be very interactive. It's not that I am just I going there. to be talking. You were there. That's nice. Um, any other person? Good evening, Ma. I was in the session last week. Okay, very well. That's great. Um, so I'm just going to ask, can any one of us tell us or give us an example of the deployment, cloud computing deployment model? What are the types that we have? Can anyone give me? Just a refresher of what we learned here last week. Is anyone? Hello. Hello. Hi, yes. hi, Moke. I actually tried to um, sign up for the um, developer's account, but for some reason, my own isn't working. I tried for a while. Okay. Um, what was the error you were getting? You are telling me to put in, put in my, my details. And after I did, nothing was still happening. No. Okay, so can you go back to the link I shared with you and there probably maybe later. I'll ask you to share your screen maybe later, but it should go. So okay. let's see where you stopped. Uh, all right, okay. how many of us have had problems with our assignment again? How many of us? Anyone again? Okay, precious. Um, then, and then probably maybe when you have encounter that kind of problem, yeah, if I... Ifeanya, did I pronounce the name well? Ifeanya. Ifeanya, sorry. If I pronounce, okay, so once you have that problem, just leave it in the discussion so that during the week, one can attend to you or connect with you so that we won't have to go back during okay. the call. Okay, right. okay, all right, thank you. Okay then. All right, so um, Precious, you want to attempt to give us an example of the deployment model? I see your hand is still raised. Hello. 
So no one of us is trying to give us the deployment model, what the different kinds of deployment model we have with cloud computing. No one is, nobody's making an attempt for it. Hello, good evening, Ma. Good evening, Alima. I'm precious, not Alima. Oh, sorry, precious, sorry, precious. Okay, so I want to try on the deployment models. I think yeah. we have to, we have the public cloud, the private cloud and the hybrid. Very well, thank you. So um, would you mind giving me what's the public cloud, an example of a public cloud? Okay, an example of a public cloud is um, Amazon, Amazon oh. AWS and uh, Microsoft Azure. Azure. Azure, no problem, it's fine. Some people call it Azure, some people call it Azure. It's fine. Thank you, Precious. Thanks. Will anyone want to volunteer for um, the service model? Can any one of us try with the service model? Oh, you want me to start calling names? If you were, were you on the call last week? Since you were to say, well, can you give me an example of a service model? I have many of you on the call. I have about five of you on the call, so I can spread it around the questions I have. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth, you want to make an attempt? I wasn't here last week. Oh, okay. Alima, are you, were you here last week? Yes, I was here last week. So can you give us an example of the service model? But, uh, I no, that's not part of it. You guys can try with um Lubumi. Can you give us? Um, good afternoon. I so I wasn't here last week, but I'm just guessing. I'm going to take a wild guess. I don't know if software as a service counts as a model. I'm not sure. I'm just taking a very wild guess. Yes, but that, that's that's a good one. You that's that's the guess you were right. I mean, you're right. Sorry, is um, your infrastructure. So we say the service model is how you want your how you with the kind of public clouds. I mean, services you want to consume. Whether it's infrastructure as a service, whether it is um, platform as a service or software as a service. So can somebody give me an example of a platform as a service? Flat. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ruth. Yeah, so platform as a service. I'm thinking database. Okay. Yes, you're right. SQL database is database is platform as a service. Yes, that's right. When you host your website on, on Azure or probably on Google or Amazon, that's also what's a platform as a service. Okay, so I'm gonna stop at that. Um, I think um, so that we can just, I mean, I've, we've eaten into the time for today, but it's very important, please. Um, it's very, very important. Um, um, one of the things that is needed here is actually commitment and also, and that's why we were quite um, emphasizing the fact that we don't want people just to jump from one tech group to the another so that they are focused on one and get to know. And then one of the things that we also, I want to emphasize once again is that please make sure that we pay attention and then we also, the inputs we are doing is just for you to um, check this thing up yourself, do some assignments. There are recordings, if you were not here last week, you can go back to the tech group that we talked about. I think we showed you guys that. I'm going to show you again. This is the tech group for Modern Workspace. If you come to files, you will see the uploaded recording for last week. It's already here. So you will see under useful videos, you will see the uploaded um, recording. Something here. Oh, let me see where, um, probably maybe this is not where, um, because we have the course. This is the course for last week. 
me see, except um, phone did not upload it. Probably maybe she forgot. Um, okay, this is the course curriculum. I think she left it in the post. Last week recording was in the post, so she must have left it, which you can always get if you look in between and in, in any of these. Yes, this is the. I think she did. A, she uploaded a copy of the recording. Like I knew she said so, that she did. A, maybe when she joins the call, we can ask her later on for the uploaded uh, version of the recording of last week. Actually, you can look into it again. It's supposed to be here. I hope nobody has tampered with it. All right, so we'll just leave it at that. So, I mean, I'll, I'll find out more. So with that said, um, last week, if you were able to sign in with to your, be able to sign in to the URL that you were given, what the URL we gave you last week was for, um, then let me see. So this was the URL. Um, you can have it again and repasting it for some of us that did not know you can repaste it. So what you do is that you click on join now for if anyone that says she could not do her own very well. So the first thing you're supposed to do have is to have a live account. If you have a, if you don't have a live account before, you can go to um, outlook.com or hotmail.com or whichever one and you do sign up for a live account. Your live account is either your hotmail or your outlook account. Once you have signed up, to an Altme account or a live account, so to say, which is Outlook. Then on that same, you just open another tab and then you do what you sign in. So when you sign in, it says what you already sign in with the live account over here. And then you say join now. Then it takes you through. It's very interactive. It is not hard. You can refer back to the exercise, you know, is a walkthrough. Let me see if we can get it again. You can refer back to the exercise that we shared. It's just a walkthrough. So I'm just going to open that. They gave a detailed walkthrough here. So I expect some of you, if you've done that, if you if you're not able to, I did. If you successfully sign up, you should have an account as this. Outlook.com, that's what I put there. And then when it says you should join, you are still connected to your Outlook profile, open another tab and go to join. So this is a link that I put in here. Um, if any while, if you follow through with this with this step, actually, I, I don't think you will have any problem. You can check it once more. It's in this, I mean, is in that um, um, location, I want to believe. So if you follow through, you are supposed to have this join, and then once you join, you just go through it. And at the end of the day, if you follow through everything that I've said here, you should have your, um, what they call it, you should have this. Now, the exercise we want to do today is for us to look at launching the admin center. Now, if you successfully signed in, so while we're working, yeah, if you, while you might want to go through this also, and then probably maybe later on I connect with you before the session ends for us to know where you're actually having the problem. But if you follow through with what I've put in here, um, you should be you should be fine. So for some of us that were not here last week, uh, apart from getting into the recording, you can go into this and then check up all of um, um, these. Um, you can check up these instruction you follow one after the other and then i'm sure you will be fine you don't really need if you don't have the name of the company just put a fictitious name there you can use yourself volume limited as the name of the company nobody's checking it out but make sure that you have a contact email will actually be your that's why we wanted you to sign up for us because when they ask for a contact email you should be able to impute this um live account in there so you can have this. This gives you this. You can use this for the whole session and then still continue to use it even when the session has finished, you know, 
because there are a lot of things for you to go on and learn, you know, with it. So that's the whole essence of it. Now, um, if you successfully sign in, um, what you should have at the end of the day is to have, you have some, this is the first thing that is going to be presented to you. Now, um, this is what it looks like, where you have your apps, all the apps of the Microsoft 365 apps that you are um, um, entitled to because of the plan you signed in for. Most times it is the E5 plan that the developer's account gives you, which gives you a whole lot of apps that you can play around with. Now you can see that the Office 365 apps are your Outlook, your OneDrive, your Word, your Excel, your um, OneNote, SharePoint, and then Teams that we're using right now. And then you have this Admin Center. Now for us to continue, one of the things you might see when you come in first, when you're about to sign in, is that maybe you get this message the next time you're about to sign in. This is enabled by default on the tenant. So what you are presented with the very first time you sign up for an Office 365 is what is called what? A tenant. A tenant is regarded as your own workspace as the workspace that belongs to your company. So you look at a tenant from the concept of a multi-tenancy. Now, a lot of us, if you have your house, if you have your father, if, you, if, if it is you are staying in your own um, personal building very well, for some of us, you know, with some of us are tenants in some houses. Now, it, being a tenant, you all share the same compound, but each of you have like your own space or your flat. So that is from that aspect that you might want to consider the Microsoft 365 or that is the concept of the cloud. That is why it says that you support a multi-tenancy approach. Again, another thing you might want to think about is that you look at, you know, the other day I told you that, okay, the Microsoft um, Cloud is sitting on the Azure, which is the Azure, the Microsoft Azure, just like Precious gave an example the other time of what a public cloud is. So being an Azure, which is a Microsoft Cloud, there is support what is referred to as what multi-tenancy. Multi-tenancy, like I explained earlier, is that a situation where you can have multiple subscriber subscribing to probably a service on your on I mean on, on the cloud services uh, and so forth. So you can look at the concept of multi tenancy. Like I give an example now, you come into your house, all of you share the same compound, you share the same exit, you share the same passage, but as much as possible, each of you have your privacy to in, in a way that is what in your own space in your own flats so that's what you look at so um microsoft cloud services the SaaS, which is a software as a service we are looking at today support what support that multi-tenancy again in that multi-tenancy in that space of your own you can decide again and say some for some of us maybe you want to look at the concept you might say okay you even get that space you rent that flat you may decide again to do another tenancy in that flat it's to your own jurisdiction you understand you can decide again to say okay you want to have another tenant inside your own so you become a landlord in your own tenant apartment so to say that's a different thing that is like going into the extreme of the multi-tenancy but what you have to bear in mind is that microsoft on its own supports um, the SaaS application support what is referred to as multi-tenancy so one of the things you want to look at is that maybe at the at the at, i mean immediately you sign up you're going to get this message you know the next time which says that at your tenant level which i'm going to show you later on at your tenant level you have this protection set in place so it might ask you now to complete it or you want to skip it from the next 14 days i will skip it for now because we're going to need it in the future for us to see how we're going to complete it you can either complete it or you can either turn it off from the tenant level but i just wanted you people to understand the concept of tenancy which you have in i mean multi-tenancy which you have in a cloud computing environment which means that you can always have i mean um, as a cloud service provider which microsoft is, it supports a lot of what 
a lot of people subscribing into that. So it operates what is called a form of multi-tenancy, where you have multiple tenants, you know, subscribing to a cloud services, so, so to say. So once you have this, this is what I have, you know, and then I want to go into the admin, which I tried to open here. So I'm just going to skip it for now. You know, skip it for the next 14 days or as what if I click on next is going to allow me to finish. Let me complete what is referred to as a what a multi factor authentication, which is referred to as a second level of authentication. So you remember we if, if any of you have like a bank account. So multi factor authentication, let me just digress a little bit for you to understand what I'm talking about. We be if you have a bank account, you remember your OTP or those OTP, they will ask you to say, OK, before you complete your transaction, provide another level of verification. So that is what is referred to a multi factor authentication, which means you have two level of verification or authentication like the word is so that what that means is that it helps whichever the cloud provider that you are subscribing to to be sure that you are who you say you are and then probably also one of the things your multi factor authentication will be asking you is this is to say okay something that you have something that you alone know and then um just for you to be able to verify another level of your identity so to say so I'm just going to go take us through this workspace if you have successfully signed in. So for some of us that are just coming in, I'm seeing some new faces. I'm seeing some new names. Welcome. For some of us, I don't think you're here with us last week, but if you're not here with us, um, what I can ask you to do is this, which I said earlier. What you can do is this. You can go back to the Teams channel and then on the Teams channel, which is the modern workspace that I'm showing you right now, go into this Teams. Immediately click on this Teams channel. This is the page that will be uh, presented to you. But rather, this is the post page where we can post our discussion, post our problem. I mean, any issues we are experiencing in the tab, people in the channels can contribute to it. Your colleagues also can contribute. I mean, and, if, and then maybe if I need to connect with you, I can connect with you and then to look at the issues you are having. But if not, what you can do is that you can go into this files tab also. On the file tabs, you will see the course curriculum. You see the course exercise and then you will see the useful videos. One of the things I think our, our recording for last week, we put it here, but I don't know for one reason why it's no longer there. I hope somebody has not downloaded it and then and, and deleted it, but I will find that from Fony anyway. Then we have the course exercise. Um, like I said, the course exercise is what you have um, for this for last week. We have one uploaded, which is just for you to be able to see how you can sign up for a developer's account. Now, if you follow through with the instruction here, you should be fine. And then at the end of the day, you should have exactly what I am having on the screen. However, before you begin, one of the prerequisites is that you must have a live account. A live account says that a live accounts like what's like your Outlook or Ultimate. So if you follow through with the instruction here, um, just like we say, Pericusa, if you do not already have signed up for a Microsoft account by visiting Outlook.com. So you can do that first. Once that is done, then you can continue with the rest of the process here. If you finish up with the rest of the process, what you should have at the end of the day is you are supposed to be presented with this kind of page that I have, which means you've successfully signed up for your Office 365 or for your developer's account. Now, developers, so what I say, the first thing you see is this. Now, when you see all of these apps, yeah, right? Now, the next thing I want to go to is that I want to go to admin, the admin, which is I want us to look at what the portal is. And then once you sign up for an Office 365, like I said, it's going to create what is called what a tenant for you. So your tenancy, a tenant subscription is peculiar to your own complaints environment or is um, peculiar to you, is specific just for your own use alone. So 
another person can come and then sign up for another tenant. And the cloud services support that form of what multi-tenancy, where you have multiple organizations that can be consuming services. In this case, software as a service can be consuming the services on um, the Microsoft platform. So first of all, so I'm going to do this show all. So this is the um, the page you will be um, 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 the page that you'll be introduced to. So you can see from this place that I see Microsoft 365 e plan. Remember when I was showing you last week, I showed you the different plans that you have with the Microsoft 365. So for me right now, the plan that I'm signed up to is what the Microsoft 365 what developer. Now, why it is a developer account is because I will be able to use it for my test environment. And that's the reason I wanted you people to sign up for it. If you sign up for the ordinary Office 365 account, you might not be able to have the privilege of um, more than a one month subscription. But because what, what we are using it for is going to be one more than a month. That's why I said go ahead and sign up rather for what for the developers account, which gives you every 30 days. I mean, every it gives you the first 19 days free and then every month, I mean, or every 30, uh, 90 days again, it renews um, itself, which is for I mean, it's better for you. So you have this. Now, within this, I can see um, some um, some information about support remote works with Microsoft Teams. You can manage Teams. You can what you may want to learn more. You might have a user management, you know, for you to be able to manage. Now, right now, I have a billing, which is nothing. I can install the Office desktop app. So if you look at a, a Microsoft 365, um, if you remember what we taught last week, if you look at the recording again, these are the major components that come with what um, the Microsoft 365. You have what the Exchange Online, you have the SharePoint Online, you have Microsoft Teams, you have OneDrive for Business. So if I do this all admin center, probably I want to see all of the admin center. So you have what? These are all the things you have. You have um, the um, Endpoint Manager. You know, I I when I spoke last week. I touch on the endpoint manager, you know, I talked on the SharePoint, I talked on Microsoft Teams, OneDrive for Business, and also um, and, and also um, some other ones. So precious to your question, like I said, the very first thing you want to do is to have what an Outlook a live account. I don't know whether you have that but I'll touch it maybe after this class we can ask a question. For some of you that are having problem, we'll go through it all over again. And like I said last week, I said just follow as I do, do as I do, but I don't know, maybe some of you miss the steps anyway. Okay, so let's go on. So the very first thing is that this is my own page, which I showed you earlier. Now the next thing I'm going to see here is where I have my what my users um, accounts. Now I have users, I have active users. Now because I'm using a developer's account, one of the things it would do for me ahead of time is probably maybe, okay, I did not make use of it in populating it, but if I select it to populate, it will populate some users for me. But good enough, I don't want it to populate. So I have the option for me to either do what? Add a user account here or use a user template or add multiple user. And then you remember what I said before about what the multi-factor authentication, where you provide another level of, of authentication for you to be verified to say you are who really you are. You can also configure it against a user or against the tenant. We will look at that. Now, we have contacts, you know, where you can add contacts or you can add multiple contacts or you can even export contacts. Who are those that are considered as contacts? So what's the difference between a contact and a user? Your user are actually who are actually the people that belongs to your organization. Your user are those members of your organization. Are your people maybe the people that belongs to the same organization with you? And then um, remember what we said the other time, they ask us for an organization name and the organization name we provided when I was doing my own was what TSM365, that is 
text seller M36501. You can decide to have your own organization, like I gave example before. When they ask for your company name, you can decide to say, okay, it is Ulubumi Limited, I want to call it, or I want to call it Precious and so on Limited, you know, or whatever name you want to. What name works for you, you can give it, you know, at the end of the day. But the other thing I ask that I said is that, what about a contact? So a contact might be someone that is not in your organization. So look at an, a contact from the perspective of saying that the people you deal with, the people you do business with. So e.g., um, I can have somebody um, on Yahoo and then I do business with them. That is my contact. That is a contact at my organization. So I might create all the contacts, if it is, if it is work, if it's possible for you to, you know, um, if you look at the concept from this concept of maybe when um, a bank is sending you a notification, remember that when a bank is sending you a notification, if you look at it very well, most times it, it will be tedious for somebody in that bank to be sending one after the other, a mail one after the other to, to each of the people in their mailing list, so to say. So what the bank might do is that they create all of us that do what that do business with them as contacts, and then they put us what is called in a mailing group. So you can now send that mail to each, I mean, to that group, even though it will come to you as if it is to you alone it is. But what most times they do is that they send it to that mailing group. So you look at a contact from the perspective of the people that are you that does business with you or anyone that does business with you is your contact or that does business with your organization so the sales team might have their own contacts they create there the technical team might have their own contacts they all created so you have that contact then if you're an organization you might want to add you might want to have multiple contacts also and then export contacts we'll look at all of that now come to guest user guest user is different a guest user is someone that you invite into your tenant. So just like what you have now, do you do you consider the way how you have um, maybe if if you were at yahoo.com and then you find yourself in um, so productive tenants, so to say. So because we invited you as what as a guest. So if I add a guest here, these are people that I want to do what? To work in or to participate or to collaborate with me in my tenants. Not necessarily contacts. Contacts don't do what? They don't participate with me in my court. I just may have them for just mailing purpose alone. Not because I want them to be able to collaborate with me or probably maybe I want them to be able to have access to resources that I share. I may not want to do that. But for guests, I may bring them into my contact, into my tenant and then be able to collaborate with them in real time. So it's as if like I created a, um, a what or what is referred to like a workspace for all of us to do or to collaborate together. So that's what you have as guests. So if I give you an example, if you look at the example again, so if you look at these teams, actually, teams allows you to do what? To create what is referred to as what? Guests. So you look at this textile active dive right now. If I look at the, um, if I come in here, my internet is pretty um, slow today. So let me say, and I want to manage team. Who is logging? Okay, um, I may not be able to show it here. My account doesn't allow this. Let me go into. It's just going to make noise. Oh, sugar. Uh, may just have some echo. So now let's look at this, and then you will see what I'm talking about, so that you can appreciate what I'm looking at. So I'm going to go to my admin here. <laughs> This um, to the admin um, to the admin page of my office 365 portal, and then you will see what has happened to you guys that were created as a guest. The difference between a guest and a use and, and a contact, because now that we've created you guys as a guest, you will see some of you. You will see the Yahoo. It can be anyone from what 
from Yahoo, from Gmail, whatever your email address can be. It can even be from the same Office 365, like you have another Office, um, and it might be the person I'm inviting is an Office 365 account. All of you will be here. So what happens is this, because I've created you as a guest, it is easier for me to share a workspace for you. It's easier for me to do what, to share um, a form of, um, documents with with you that i can i mean all of us can share together so we have you here as guest users you understand so you can look at a lot of you here that you guys are what are like our guest users which is what we created so you have an example here which we are going to go to later on um a lot of you will do that we'll show you how to do that so then if you if you delete any user be it um, a user a guest and all of that you'll find them here in deleted users now what do you use group for you have by default when you finish when you create an office 365 anybody that you add to the office 365 is is a member of the all complaint any user that you create will go directly into this group. And then you also have it here because this group is actually what it will use to create a Teams channel. So it creates a Teams channel. Um, you can see now it says what Steam status. So the very first time that you create a company name is going to create um, a Teams channel for it also. And then it's going to have all the users you ever created in that company and put it them there so what you find out that there are different kinds of group you can create you can create what is called a distribution group you can create what is also called what um an m365 group an m365 group is actually when you create that group it is actually for you to be able to what to collaborate so one of the things you have with an m365 group is that it creates what is called a teams channel just like what we've, I showed you earlier. So it's going to create a Teams. You can see you'll also be able to add, add Microsoft Teams for group conversation. So you can create it. So in an environment where you feel, okay, you want people to be able to um, share documents together, maybe you want to create a group for a project. Let's say I have a construction project I want to create, and I just have some people that I want them to come together to be able to brainstorm, share documents, um, com um, do, I um, mean, converse what they are um, in that project, I can actually create what is called the M365 group. Then you have a distribution group. The distribution group no, does not necessarily need to have like a what, an M365, I mean, a Microsoft Teams channel. It is only mainly used for what, for email. For email distribution is actually what you use it for. Then you have the mail enable security group. So what you do, you do with a mail enable security group is what you use it to control access to what is what OneDrive and SharePoint, you know. So it is a distribution list, but it is only used also to control access to what OneDrive and SharePoint. And finally, you have the last one, which is what the security group, which controls, um, you can use it for OneDrive and SharePoint, and then what is called mobile device management so we'll talk about that i don't want to bore you, bore you with that right now you know so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go back to um my users so let's go back home um so you have you can delete a group then you have what is called a shared mail bus um a shared mail bus what when you create a shared mail bus a shared mail bus is such that you create probably maybe um you have multiple you know for you know um m365 office 365 is licensed per user so let's assume you have like a mailing list or you have like um feedback at your company's name and people as when people send mail to that feedback at um um, feedback at um, your company name you want everybody to you want some set of people to be able to see the mails but you don't want to assign license to an um, a, a user mailbox that you create call feedback so you can what, use what is called what a shared mailbox so a shared mailbox allow you to create something like that feedback at your company.com and then you can now assign a lot of people to it so that they can see the content of that mailbox. Anytime they send me to that mailbox, they can look at it. They can um, 
they can um, reply to people if they wish. But what is important is that as many people that will have access to that shared mail bus must have a license also. So that's what you should, I um, mean, you should bear in mind. So one of the things again you can do on M365, the next one is going to what rules. So, you know, it is role-based access control. We call it what role-based access control, where you are able to give specific people the level of access or privilege they will be able to have. Now, the very first time you create a Microsoft 365 account, the account in you, which you use in creating it, assume what is called what the global admin. Um, let me see if I can. I can expand this here yeah, very well. So it's it's uh, it, it's it's assume what is referred to as what the global administrator. So if you successfully today set up your M365, whichever account you use, have what the global administrator account, which has what unlimited access to manage every feature on the M365. If you look at what I was trying to do, when I was trying to show you things about Teams, because my account was the one logged in, I said, no, you won't be able to see what I want you to see. You know, when I wanted to show you about guest user, I had to switch to use the admin account so that you can see it because I don't have that access. But the admin account I switched to is like a global admin, so it has all of the right. Now, let's assume you have in your environment people you just want them to be able to manage access to Exchange Online so that they can create groups, create service accounts, or monitor service else. Then you give them what is called what this Exchange Administrator. We will go through all, all of these things. So let's assume your organization also, you look at people that probably maybe any request that users come around, ah, I need to reset my password, my password has expired, or probably maybe I need to be able to do service desk requests. You can give them what? App desk admin. So we'll look at all of that. You have um, user administrator also who can reset what? Password, create and manage users. They can also create groups. They can filter service requests and monitor else. You give them that. So if you have people that probably you want them to be able to have access to teams, maybe to create teams, groups, teams channel, I mean, manage Microsoft 365 groups that I showed you later on, you might just give them specifically what for what for these things that mean. So the beauty about um, the M365 is that it is what it is role based. So you can do what is called a role, role based access control, which means you're just giving people the very amount of privilege or access that they require. So you can come into this place and do it. So there are the next thing we want to move to is resources. Now, when we create meeting, one of the things we want to do is that in a typical environment, in an office environment, when you create meeting, you know, in your office right now, you might have a lot of meeting rooms where you have a uh, meeting room one, meeting room two, where people just meet, you know. So you might want to create what is, this is where you create rooms and meeting. I mean, I mean, meeting rooms or rooms for the, I mean, you create what is called a resource. So a resource can either be a room or an equipment. So let's assume for this particular meeting room, I want one of the equipment that must be in that room is that it must have a projector or it must have like a monitor. So you can create an equipment and add it. So you can add a resource which can be, the resource type can be what? A meeting. So you can see, you said you create this for things like a conference room, complaint car or equipment that anybody needs to use. So you can actually create your resource type to either be a room or an equipment. So if I know that people are supposed to um, book for this meeting room, I can create as many as possible meeting rooms as much as possible, you know. But when you create a resource group, this is not licensed. What you license most time is what? Users. So when you create a resource, um, a resource like rooms or equipment, you do not have to license it. Another thing you can do is that it allows you also to add what is called sites, you know. So you use also sites to probably say, probably maybe this is a site, maybe this site is what um, some form of users are going to be, or there's another site some form of users are going to be. So let's look at this very, this one is very important, which is your billing. 
Now, if you look at billing, one of the things you can do here really in Billy is that you can purchase more services. Let's assume that you feel that the service you're using, um, okay, when I use the word site, so that it's open now. So the site is actually specific to, I, I just remember because I said site, that somebody may be thinking of probably maybe um, a location. So the site is actually referred to as your website. So have this in mind you know, as your website. So you can create site per what, per, um, per group, maybe per department. We'll look at that when we come into SharePoint. But for now, we are not doing that. So we'll look at the purchase services. So you can actually purchase different kinds of services. So let's assume now, maybe for as a trier, that's what you want to use it for. You want to purchase service as a trier, not because you want to use it for anything. So I can purchase another plan and add it to this plan. Probably maybe I want to test with it. Now you can look at on that billing. This is where you have your products, the products that you have bought. You also have what the license that um, is entitled to you. So I can purchase any of these. So you see power apps per user plan. I can add it. Maybe I just want to compare. Maybe I want to compare it with some other things. I can compare it probably with some others. I can add this plan then for me to be able to test. Now, this is where you do that. Now, if you look at products, once you sign up for a subscription, you can actually see all of the products that you are entitled to. Once you sign up for a subscription. Now, for me right now, I want this to load. My internet is a, is is um is a bit slow. Okay, so you see what it says. These are the products what owned by your organization that you bought from Microsoft or from a third party. So for us, you are supposed to be able to see Microsoft 365 E5 developer without Windows. All of this is what and it says it's going to expire what um in three months later. And then that three months are being two months later, which is I um, mean June or July, it will also auto renew. So I don't have a problem. That's why we're using the developer's account. It is not for complaints use, so it's just for you to be able to use it and for you to be able to try this. So where this is where you can um you know license, you know, license will now tell you about your subscription. Um you can assign license to people, you know, from here. Um you can go into bills and payments, all of that. And if you have any case around support, maybe you want to do support, you have any issue, you can actually open a support case with Microsoft and they will ask send to you even when you are using it in what in um in in a um, in a trial version. Now this settings page is what remember that when I sign up, I sign up work with what tm 365all Microsoft. So I want to show you people something real fast. Now, in all of this admin setup, just the same way that when you, in your family right now, I use that as an example. Let me use uh, my own son name as an example. My son name is what? Toriola. It means every member of my family will have what? Toriola as a son name, which is every, that is, the, what is the name that is what? peculiar to every one of us. But apart from we having that song name, each and every one of us have what is called what? Our unique name. So your unique name, my own unique name is what? Ola Jumoke. I have someone else in my family that can be what? Toby. And Toby what? Toriola. Toriola is still what? Our what? Our, um, it's like our compound name. Now look at this. Anytime you come to your Azure Active Directory, the Azure Active Directory is actually that if you look from the word directory, we will go into this later on, maybe in the course of the um when you hear the word directory, directory actually tells you that this is like a database or a container that contains um the name of people, their address or attributes or features or anything. I am a lady. One of my attributes is that I have fe I am a female. That's my gender. My age is an attribute. Um, my the my address is an attribute. My department is an attribute. Those are the things you have when you create a user account. So your Azure Active Directory contains um, 
a, a, a database of objects. We call it objects. So your objects can be a user, it can be a computer, it can be a laptop, it can be a printer or anything on your network. But in Azure, it is referred to as what? Azure Active Directory. On your normal environment, you call it what? Windows Active Directory. But on Azure, it has to be Azure Active Directory. So we will look into the differences between the two of them. Whatever user you create in Office 365, in that same portal I left before that I showed you user, will automatically come in here also. You will see all of the users here. You can actually create your users here, which you also have that I can add user, I can add new guests, or I can or I can do that. I can do that here, or I go into the um, Office 365 portal. Either way, the everything is also tied to what the Azure the Active Directory. It is what is referred to as the identity provider, the identity provider of your cloud service, which is what the Azure Active Directory. So what you have here is where you have all the users now. If you come into the dashboard of your Azure Active Directory, you will find that this is where your tenant name is referred to. This is what is called that. So you are asking, oh, what is my tenant name? Or maybe you go into an environment and you want to know their tenant name. All you need to do is just look for the Azure Active Directory and look for something that carries the word the on Microsoft. That is the name of the tenant. Now, the on Microsoft, remember this this um, TSM365 is referred to what as the name of my company when I was filling the form. So because I do, for every um, every um, subscription you made, every sign up you do, the very first thing is what is going to assume the dot on Microsoft. Have that in mind. Is always going to assume the dot on Microsoft. The very first time you sign up to Office 365 is going to assume the dot on Microsoft. This is your company name. Fine. But let's assume now that I now have my own domain name. My domain name, let's say in my own case, your own your domain name is the name of your company. Remember, some of us have like um, a public website. So in my own case, my own domain name is ashem.com. That's the name of my domain name. But I don't want this dot on Microsoft to be what people will be. So if my users sign up at the end of the day, because for every user that I create, if you look at the details of their name, it is what? Do you see? It is what? csmm 3 microsoftcom I don't want that. I want people to be what? To assume the name. So the name can be um, user1 at ashem.com or user1 at, um, what they call it, at um, userb at ashem.com. You want it to be more specific to your company's name. In my own case, what I have right now as my domain name is what is referred to as, um, remember I took, I took you guys there. So what is referred to now, the domain name, you see that I don't have any right now except the default one. So I can decide to add my domain name. So, which is what I want every one of us to do now. How many of us have like their account signed up before I start this? I want, I don't want to do this and then we'll go back again. How many of us have our Office 365 account signed up? Please, with a raise of hand. How many of us have it signed? How many? None? Okay, all right. So what I would do right now is this. When I say I want to add a domain, so my domain name in my own case is what my company name I want to add is referred to as wintest.com.ng. One of the investments that I will ask you to make for yourself really is this. Do yourself the favor of a lot of these domain name is not more than 1,500 that you, you can just register. You can register it on things like Ultra Crest. Excuse me. The when you register a domain name with the surface of the NG, that is the Nigeria, it's, I think it's nothing less than a thousand naira or one thousand naira five hundred. You can and it is a year. 
you can actually have that registered and then just use it for your own practice. So for me, I have this domain name, which is what winters.com.ng, which I have registered. So you can actually, have, one cool thing about Microsoft, which I like a lot is this, you can actually watch videos on how to add it. It's actually very straightforward. There is nothing. So I say, I know this thing is going to throw an error for me because I'm already using it in another tenant, in another of his by tenant. But I just want us to walk through how for you to add your own custom domain. We call it your custom domain. Your custom domain might be the domain you want to use for your company. So I just use this. I'm going to say I want to use this domain. And the next thing is going to ask me to do is that it's going to try to verify that this domain. So it gives me, it wants to go through a verification process for this domain. If this domain really belongs to me, I can do two things to verify that I'm the owner of this domain. Is it that I add a test record to the domain DNS record? Um, there are a lot of things that I feel that some of us would have known, like probably, but if you don't know it, um, a DNS provider or somebody hosting your DNS record is the person hosting your domain name, so to say. So let's assume your company name right now, somebody. Okay, Ultra Crest. Yeah. If you have, yes, Ultra Crest, you can actually contact them. They are not, um, it's very easy. Okay, thank you, Bumi, for that. So you can actually go to Ultra Crest and just buy a domain name. Um, and then you, you, when you add the test record, you can, so you can add a test record for you to verify. Or if you can't add a test record, you can create what is called an, an MS record, or you can add a test file to the domain. Now, if I say I want to add a test record, it's going to give me this process of saying, okay, continue. And then what it's going to do is that, see, it's going to create this test record for me. It is so easy enough for you to create this stress record for you. So all of these details is what you can take this if you don't know how to go about it. Send this to whoever is hosting your domain name. They know what to do. But if it is something you can do on your own, what is asking me actually to do? Let me see if I can log in real fast. I'm just going to take, because we started late, I'm just going to take, I um, mean, another 15 minutes of your time. Sorry about that. Um, let me see if I can. Um, so when you when you sign up with Ultra Quest, one of the things you might want to do is that if your domain name is not, um, if you cannot manage your domain name, then you can go to what Cloudflare to manage your domain names. So I um, might also be showing you that you just buy your domain. You might so there's a difference between the person hosting your domain and the person that is doing what that is managing it also. Or maybe you want to create your records for record purpose. For me, I bought the domain with what with um with um what they call it with ultra crest but in terms of management i use cloudflare for it so but it's not something that if you are having any problem with yours please let me know i can assist um oh i still remember my account yes fine okay so for me right now i manage my account with cloudflare you know, with even though the domain is bought from all trackers. So one of the things is asking me to do here is for me to do what? To create, you know, to create the record. So all I need to do is go to this DNS where I can create the record. So what he's asking me is that I should do what? I want to um, put this page side by side if it's possible. So let me see if I can, um, so that you guys can see what I'm doing, you know. So, can you guys see my screen? 
So what he's asking me to do is that, okay, go, if you are the owner of this domain, go to whoever is hosting your DNS, your DNS hosting provider. You can see, go to your domain registrar or your DNS hosting provider, go to the DNS there and create this record that you are the real owner of this domain. So for me, I have, I can create it, which means that what is, what it just required me to do here, You know, this is my DNA. So I, all I need is to what to create. Um, the, okay, add the record. So you see the record. It told me that is a test record. So I'm just trying to show you when you want to create it. So this is an A record. It's not an A record. It told me. It said it's a test record. So when you're creating, you select what the test record. So it's a text record. And then it told me that the name of my record is what the at sign. So all I need to put here is just an at sign. Do you understand? Then the next thing it says to me is this. It's saying that I also need to create um, and I also need to do what? Um, put a value. So uh, I think because I have this value, because I have this at sign before, that's why it's not going. So I'm supposed to see a place where I'm going to put a value. So if you look at the test record, I've already created it. So because I'm on another domain right now, it's asking for a different name. So I can either edit this or add this. For each tenant that you are creating a test record is different. So I can come back here and put and just change. I have already a test record which is already pointing to it. You see that this at sign is the same thing as my word, winters.com. Then he asked me for this record. That's all he's asking. And then my time to leave, I can actually put it. So that's what you can do and you can create. And after that, you say what? Verify. And then once I can verify, I can continue working. Now with that done, if I can verify, I can continue working. So I have done my verification. Let's assume I have done my verification and everything works fine. The next time I'm going to come, which is what I'm going to show you here. Hold on. Um, I'm going to come if I've created my record and it's showing very well. The next time I'm going to come and work, this is all I will have. I can create my user right now and my user can be append at wingtest.com.ng. So I want every one of you to do that before our next class. Is there any question at this point? Please, I am willing to answer. So if you connect, if the reason why if I try to do this, it won't go through is because I already attached this name to a different tenant, which I'm trying to show right now. Now, if this name, which is winters.com.ng, is not in another tenant, it will allow me to go through. But because I've already put it in another of his 365 tenants, you can not use the same name. So you can see, you can not use the same name in two different i mean to the same domain in two different tenants is only can only use it at one time in a tenant so in my case if i go back to this tenant that i already have the winters.com.ng already used which let's say i've gone through that process i've created the record just like i show you right now all i need to do is that if i'm creating a new user which i want to show you right now you will see the domain name there that is showing winters.com.ng so i can create the user instead of my users to be dot on microsoft my users accounts will now start being what um winters.com.ng so let's see so let's say i want to add the user here i just want to show us let's assume i want to add the user and then when you want to add a user next week what we're going to do we're going to add users using um the gui and then we're going to add users using the partial so you guys be ready so let's assume my user this time is i want to call him um williams williams um kenneth you know 
Now my display name is this, and then the name of the person, unless I want to call it we names. Conversion I want to use. You now see, I have the winters.com here. I can decide, do you see now? This is the name of my own company. I use wintersltd.allmicrosoft.com. You know, like I said, for the very first talent you create, you must always append the on Microsoft. Then you can now bring your custom name. Now, what we want to be seeing going forward is that we want to see what a custom name. But if you don't have any, no problem. If you don't have any, but I'm just showing you what you are supposed to have later on. But look at this place. I already have witness.com added. Compare it to me coming back here, and then I want to add the user. You'll find that that in my let me just close this you can always close and come back later and then to finish it imagine me i want to add a user you will see that at the point of me wanting to create the user i will not see the option for the word for the my custom domain what i will really only see is just the dot on microsoft.com do you see on this drop down right now i did i i cannot see any option for any custom domain because i have not added one but the only thing I can see right now is just what the dot on Microsoft. So that's one of the things you might want to force to is for you to bring in your own custom domain. So if you have any question at this time, I think I am ready to take and then our next class will be how we can add the users after we have verified our domain. I'm going to also send that. So that is also in. Um, I don't need to send. We already have the step here. Um, let me see. We already have the set. Where is our teams again? Do I have our teams? In um, in the Teams channel. In the Teams channel, I was showing you earlier. We already have it there. So um, if you could just check it up, it's already there. So. Yeah, so if you look at the teams again, um, where's my account? Hold on, please. So if you visit this, um. Uh, the same instruction that I left for you, the same instruction I was talking about. Um, you guys are not supposed to be seeing all of these. So if you look at the same instruction that I selected for you, files, and then if you go to the okay, so videos is not here. I need to find out from point what is. So if you go into this instruction, you will see the instruction for you to do what. For you to be able to um, add your custom domain. So there is the option for you. So do you see the option for us to add our custom domain? Easier also. So please, um, this is exercise four. Um, if you guys have gone through it, the truth is that I will not be going through it right now. So I put in exercise for add your custom domain. So this is how for you to go to your custom domain. And once you have added, I want to believe that we finish this page. So this is what your um, this whole exercise. So the reason why I cannot go to our day two exercise where we will set up the users and all of that is because I wanted us to finish to this. So if you have any question now, you can share your screen for some of you that are having the problems around um, uh, um, around your server. Let me look at it. Any question, please? So what we will do next is also to be able to see how we can navigate to each of these admin center, but I would rather want us to talk about each of these admin centers when we are on that topic. Right now, our next task is supposed to create users. Any question? Hello. Hello. Yeah. I, Mama. Yeah. Mama. Yes. yes okay. So I'm not sure. I don't think my question comes in now, but I just want to drop it just against future when when the time when we get to that point. 
so I know that I work in an organization and I I I'm responsible for communication. I've had to call to ask for them to create an account, and mm-hmm. there's supposed to be a feature that prevents people from sending forwarding the messages outside of the organization. I'm not. I know it's supposed to be under settings. Okay, so, maybe yes, okay, so. Okay. But I, I want to make. I know I've been asking, and they keep telling me that something licensed something. But I okay. I just mentioned it here so that when that time comes, when we get to where we're discussing that, I'll be able to understand clearly. Okay, great. So the so just to touch on that, what you're asking for right now is um what is called um an Azure Information Protection, which you when you have an email or you want to prevent someone from sending or forwarding a mail that is meant. That make you say I sent you sent me a mail now, so you wouldn't want me to forward it outside any to any other person outside the organization. If I get your question right, right? Yes, please. Okay, so that feature there is one that comes bonded with um, the 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 one, so it just give you a read only. Um, let me show you that. So, what is actually responsible for what you're asking? So what is actually responsible for what you're asking right now is referred to why is um, I want um, come in, please. Let me see. OK, so what is actually responsible for what you're asking? Remember the last time I said show all my so what you're asking for is an Azure Active Directory um, feature, but it comes in what is um, what you call Enterprise mobility plus security suits. That's actually what it is. But when you have like, um, so um, for right now, I don't have it here. I think we will just see how to add it. We call it Microsoft, I mean the Azure Information Protection. So if you have the Azure Information Protection, it's out of what, what it prevents you from doing. It prevents users from being able to what? Send mail also. So it puts a form of control or a regulatory kind of uh, protection on your email. People cannot be, I can even, you can even decide, you can even give the people the permission to send the mail, forward it out. But then the people that they, that get it will not be able to do what, print it, will not be able to also download it. All the most they can do is just to what, read it. You can even go beyond that and say, probably maybe all your users in your environment, they are not able to do what is called a print screen of that message, you know. That is referred to as what um, a combination of um, you call it the enterprise mobility plus security suit. So you have that as a feature. The feature you are talking about is Azure Information Protection. Then you also have the Microsoft in tune with it. So it is not. We will touch it here. What you can do is this: if you if you are finished signing up for year on this. Which will, but it's still um, uh, a setting that is in the future, probably maybe in the fifth or sixth week. So what you can do is this: if you want to try it ahead of time, do your purchase. You can come in here and see if you can see what is called enterprise, um, because you will need the old feature, or you can do EMS. So if this allows you, you can see enterprise mobility plus security suit. You know, or let me see EMS. Let me see whether it comes here. Because M365 is supposed to give you, but now the M365 does not come with the M, M, I mean, with the EMS. So you have it here. It's security, enterprise mobility for security. So if you come on details, um, you can decide to see whether it will add for you. Um, I think the, the problem we had before was, so you can start a free trial. You know, you can just start a field trial and then when we come in there, you will appreciate it. But if you start a free trial now, it will start counting for you. But if you want to wait till we get to that stage, that is when you want to add it. You will be able to add it and then we can go through it. So it's what is called an Azure Information Protection where you prevent people. You can even track the usage of your file. So let's assume now, um, let me see if I can give you like an example. Um, I may be going into so um, 
another thing. Let me see if I can show you from my own personal. Um, So why this is loading, I can show you from here also why this is loading. Um, so let's assume it also allows you to do something like this. This is my system. I can decide to if, you right, if I right click now, you see it. Uh, maybe let's say I right click, you understand. So you see something that says what classify and protect. Do you understand? So I can actually classify. If you see, can you see what I'm showing, um, Bumi? Can you see it? Yes, yes. So this yes, is what it is. It's like classify and protect. So, so you have it. So, but if it is the ordinary M365, if it's not the developer one, I'm not sure it's in the developer. You have the M365 in the developer uh, mode, you know. So it's also what allows me to do something like this. So let me say I want to send a new email. Now, um, this is my email. Let's say as I want to send a new email. So you see it here in sensitivity. If I come into sensitivity, let's assume I want to send you um, an email. Let's see whether this can drop down. So actually, I'm supposed to have the sensitivity is a is a whole lot here. Let me see if it comes up. Maybe it's because I um my system is dragging. I have a lot. Thank of you very much. I think you've seen it now. I think so I already that's... have a guide now. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. So, but I can only send you something if you need it. So, is there any question? If anyone, can you share your screen? Let's see what is the issue. Um. Why others, if they want to wait behind to see how to, but if not, if I can you share your screen for let me see what is um, happening. Okay, please. Uh, okay, okay, let me try to. Precious also say why she was signing up for the M365. Precious, are you good now? Hello, Precious. Yes, ma'am, fine now. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Tenny, I guess you just joined us. Tenny, Timmy Lola. My okay. laptop is actually hanging. I can't access my, I don't know what's wrong, but it's really, really hanging. It's been hanging for a while now. I can so, type on my browser, yes. But if it's okay to reach out to you when it's convenient, I can right, also do that so that you can. But make sure, did you go through the documentation I put there? Because it's actually quite very straightforward. Did you, are, you, are you following it and you're still getting that error? Sorry? The documentation in the Teams channel, the the exercise notes we we uploaded there. Are you following it and you're still getting the um No, the no, no. No, I actually looked at the at the files on the mm. group, but what I was seeing was um post outline. I guess I was no, no. The, so the one for us is not cross outline. So what I did was that that's that's why i said for a lot of i think the problem is that a lot of people don't know how to probably um assess or do this so you know your teams if you know your if you know the tech group you signed up for so i'm trying to share my screen again if you know the tech group you signed up for if your tech group if you come to this this is for the people if you come to ai and, and miss reality this is for the people for AI and Miss Reality. Miss, they have yes. their own channel. 
But you, you came in for modern workspace, which is where M365 is. So you come in here, you click on this. So for M365 modern workspace, you, they have their own post, they have their own files. So each of oh. these channels up. When you now go to course exercise, you will see it here. These are the exercises you're supposed to. So I have not uploaded oh. a new one. The new one will be about creating the users, creating the group, and then ahead of time, I may want you people to first try using the PowerShell script, creating during the GUS. By the time I come in next week, we'll just do it from that way. So I want to, I want, there will be a template I'm going to upload, which you are going to use that same template to see how you can populate ahead of time for you to create users with um, PowerShell script or creating the bulk user and all of that. So we will do that next week. I'm going to upload that document, but I didn't upload it today because I don't want it to cause any confusion for us. Do you okay, understand? Okay, so okay, okay. So I'll, I'll look at this one. Yes, when you look at this document. Exactly. All right, okay. then. All right, thank you. All right, guys, thank you for the time. If there's no question, but if there's any question, please do me a favor. Maybe what I will do right now is to just post your questions here and you can at mention me. So what you can do is this. If you want to start a new conversation, see, you are here in modern workspace. You can say, you can at mention me if you want to call my attention to something, probably maybe you need um, any assistant. If you see, just use the at sign. And then anybody you want to, even if it is somebody or you know, if you had mentioned me, my name will come out, and then I will receive this notification immediately that you, I mean, you know, somebody I can't mention myself. I'm the same person, so you know, there's no way I can mention myself. So let's assume now I want to mention you rather, which is um, if your name is here, um, is if anybody you know. I can mention you to say, how are you doing with your assignment? You know, if you have, and then we can start, you can start replying me. So even also, if you want to add mention, if you want to post this question, or probably you need, um, I am doing this, 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 but you are on this modern channel. If you post any problem you're having, every one of us that is doing a, a modern workspace, will see you and then we can assist and then connect with you to assist you on that. Do you get? So that will be the end of the class. I hope this is you find all of this very useful and informative. Um, hopefully next week we're going to meet and we're going to see again. Um, thank you guys for the time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Bye bye. Bye everyone. So we'll make this recording available also. Timmy Tokwa Adeleke, are you still there?